Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get a C in your GCSE. This lesson, resultant forces. Now resultant forces is a kind of funny topic because it's one of those things which they put on the exam paper that sounds very, very technical and puts people off because it sounds technical. It's actually incredibly easy. It's one of the easiest parts of physics once you know what it is. Let me show you. Imagine we have an object and it's experiencing a pair of forces. There's three newtons pulling it to the left and there's five newtons pulling it to the right. What is the resultant force on this? Resultant force just means the total overall force acting on an object. So there's these two forces acting against each other and all you do is subtract one from the other. It's that simple. If you're presented with a problem like this and you need to work out the resultant force, first ask yourself which one of these two forces is going to win this tug of war? And hopefully it's fairly obvious that the biggest one is, the five newtons. So our object is going to go this way. It's going to go to the right for a start. It's important that you get the direction. All forces have direction, okay? If you just put the number and you don't put the direction, it could be going in any direction. So first step, which way is it going to go? That way, the direction of the biggest one. And then we just need to work out the magnitude, the size of that force. And that, again, is incredibly easy and it's incredibly intuitive. All you need to do is the big number, take away the small one. So, 5 newtons minus 3 newtons equals 2 newtons. There we go. There's the answer. That's all there is to it. That's how you work out a resultant force. Now at GCSE, that's as difficult as it gets to work out resultant force. You could be dealing with any object at all, but the principle is still the same. Firstly, figure out which direction overall is going to win in that tug of war. And then to work out the magnitude of the resultant force, you just do the large number, take away the small number. And that's it. Simple, isn't it? Now there is one special case which you need to be aware of, and that is when you've got an object which has two equal and opposite forces acting on it. So let's say that we've got a ball here and it's got a weight of 100 newtons, that weight is causing it to fall through the air and it's falling so quickly that it's now got an air resistance of 100 newtons. Under these circumstances, exactly what you might think would happen does happen. The resultant force is 100 newtons minus 100 newtons, which gives you a resultant force of zero newtons. Now this is important to us because if the overall force on an object, the resultant force on an object is zero, then it's not going to be speeding up anymore. It's not going to be slowing down. It's not going to be changing velocity in any way whatsoever. So if you look at an object that's moving at a constant speed, you can automatically say, right, it must have a resultant force of zero newtons. Any time any object is traveling at a constant speed or a constant velocity, then its resultant force is zero. Now that's important. If an object has a constant velocity, doesn't matter about the direction, but if it has a constant velocity, then you know that the resultant force on that object is zero newtons. There is no overall force on that object. All the forces are cancelling each other out. Now this might be an object which is stationary, or it might be an object which is traveling at a thousand miles an hour. It doesn't make a difference. If that object has a constant velocity, if it's not speeding up and it's not slowing down and it's not changing direction, then overall, the resultant force is going to be zero every single time. When you have to work out resultant force, you will always have two forces going in opposite directions. All you've got to do firstly is figure out which is the bigger force. That's the one that's going to win. So your resultant force is going to be in the direction of the bigger force. And secondly, to work out the magnitude of it, you just do the large number, take away the small number. It's that simple, that's all there is. The only other thing that you need to remember is that special case, if the two forces are equal and opposite, if they're both the same magnitude, then your resultant force is zero, and so your object won't change velocity. It's not gonna accelerate or decelerate. It's not going to change its speed at all. The flip side of that is also true, which is that if you see an object that is moving with constant velocity and expect this to crop up, if you see an object with constant velocity, you can say, I know the resultant force is zero. You don't need to do any calculations whatsoever. Constant velocity is zero Newton's resultant force. 
Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and if this video was useful to you, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe, or share it with anyone else you think could also use a little help. Thanks for watching.